much love filling my emptiness such love showing me holiness oh Jesus such love such love Day 9, 24th December Since the Roman Emperor's edict said that everyone was to enroll in his own country, Joseph and his wife Mary departed for Bethlehem. The trip took four days traveling over mountainous roads in the cold of winter and rain. Think of how much the Blessed Virgin must have suffered on that journey. As soon as they arrived, the time of her delivery was at hand. So Joseph went around the town looking for lodging where Mary could give birth to her child. But because they were poor, they were driven away by everyone even from the inn where poor people were normally sheltered. So they left the town and found a cave. As Mary entered, Joseph protested, saying, My dear wife, how can you spend the night in this cold, damp place? Can't you see that this is a stable for animals? But she answered, Joseph, this shed is the royal palace where the Son of God chooses to be born. And since the time for the birth had arrived, the Holy Virgin was in prayer. Suddenly, the cave became brilliantly lit, as if by the sun or a star, and the Son of God came forth into the world as a tender infant, crying and trembling in the cold. The first thing Mary did was to adore him as her God. Then she held him to her bosom and wrapped him in swaddling clothes that she had brought along. Finally, she laid him on a little straw in the manger. That is how the Son of the Eternal God chose to be born for love of us. A saint once said that those who love Jesus Christ most ought to kneel at the feet of the Holy Child and in spirit perform for him the same service as the beasts in the stable at Bethlehem who warmed him with their breath. We should warm him with our sighs of love. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 to 9. Have this mind among yourselves, which was in Christ Jesus, who though was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, Being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross.
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, imagine you are in need of help and you go to someone whom you feel will help you, stretch out your hand and ask him for help and that person spits in your hand. How would you feel? Something like this happened in the life of Mother Teresa. She went to a baker asking help and also for some bread for her orphan children. She goes to him and asks him. He spits in her hand. How does she react? She responds by taking back that hand and says, this is for me. Then stretches out her, the other hand and says, now will you please give something for my children? Seeing this humility of Mother Teresa, my friends, the baker man said, Mother, I will give bread to you and for your children. And he became one of the most important donors for her orphanage. My dear sisters and brothers, Mother Teresa became an example of humility for all of us down the many years today. From where did she get this experience? From where did she get that power to really enjoy the life that she lived? It was Jesus. It was Jesus Christ. And, and the very important passage that I read for you, my friends, depicts that incident. Jesus did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant. Jesus, my friends, though God, became a humble human person. This passage, my friends, has very important lessons for us. The four important aspects of Jesus' humility we learn today. First is that he is God. His nature is God. He was pre-existence, divine in nature, existing in perfect unity and equality within the Godhead. That's the first aspect of this passage, my friends. Secondly, he willed to walk the path of kenosis in Greek, which means self-emptying. He emptied himself completely, my friends, emptied himself of the certain divine attributes. It is not substitution of deity but an addition of humanity to his nature. Third important element, my friends, that we learn today is he takes the role of servanthood and has human likeness. He divides himself from the pomp and, and, and all the joys of being a glorious king and rather takes the human form, a humble, simple little babe whom we will worship this Christmas. And the fourth aspect that we learn from Jesus is obedience to till the death on the cross. This is Jesus, my friends. His ultimate act of humility is seen in his obedience till the point of death. Jesus teaches us to be humble. For Christians, for us human beings, humility, my friends, lies in the capacity to be compassionate, empathetic, and understanding. Humility also helps us promote value of equality, respect for diversity, and also collective responsibility to address global challenges. And finally, my friends, humility, humility also moves us to help those in need, work towards social justice, and build communities based on understanding and tolerance. My friends, Mother Teresa walked that path. She is a shining example for us today. And she walked that path because ahead of her was Jesus himself. Though in the form of God did not count equality with God, he became human. He teaches us to be humble, to be loving, to be considerate. This Christmas, my friends, let us experience that love of God which helps us to be humble. Experience that love for ourselves, accepting ourselves and loving ourselves, accepting that love and being loved for others, sharing that love with our neighbors and helping the others experience the love that is within us. May that be our prayer, my friends, during this novena. 
and maybe have a beautiful Christmas of love and of service to one another in humility. Amen. O oh, tiny infant, I would not be so bold as to lie at your feet, except that you yourself have invited me to come near. My sins have caused you to cry so many tears while in your stable at Bethlehem. But since you have come to earth to forgive repentant sinners, please forgive me also. I regret with all my heart having ignored you so often. You give so many great graces to everyone on this holy night. Bring peace to my soul and to the world. The one gift I ask this Christmas is the grace to love you forever with my whole heart. Inflame me, Lord, with your love. I do love you, O God, who has become a mere child for me. Never let me stop loving you. Mary, my mother, God will do all things you ask in prayer. Pray to Jesus for me. Amen.